Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do today we're going to do Black Flag issue zero by Maximum Press. Um, yeah, I picked this up for seventy five cents, so it's not much. Um, I bought this because I have the other Black Flag comments as well. I haven't read it yet, um, and I'm not sure if I want to. And the reason is because uh, back in the nineties, when Image come, uh, came out. Um, and all these these other companies, they wanted to do the, they are trying to be edgy, you know. And I bought a lot of these comics, you know, from from Image, from Maximum Press, and other companies that have similar themes, you know, like big, bad, buffed, hard ass men and women with big guns and and pouches and and very violent looking uh, creatures like this this ape and and it's very um. What's the word? Uh, extreme, if you will. And uh, I bought them and there was a market for it. Uh, a lot of people liked it at that time. So I thought, hey, is it still good now that I, you know, you know, older and hopefully a little bit wiser? Uh, do I enjoy these comics as I used to? Um, and the answer is no. Uh, not that the art uh, here is bad. Or something. I mean, there is some bad art in here, or wonky art, and you know, let's let's dive in. Let me explain you what I see. So we go here, and the first thing uh, I see is, oh, wait a minute, this is a Deadpool Spider-Man ripoff because of the pose of the katana, and oh, we have this Deadpool-looking uh, emblem like here, you know, and then we have all these pouches just like Deadpool, and he jumps, you know, it's very. At the time, there were a lot of characters being copied and then changed uh, somewhat to, you know, resemble on what people want and liked in mainstream comics. But then they did their own thing, which is not a bad thing. I mean, at that time, it was very... Uh, everyone did it. Let's uh, let's leave it at that. But I'm not familiar with those, all these characters. I mean, this is the first time that I have read a Black Flag comic. So it seems that this guy is an alien. And they call him Rascal. Uh, yeah, so Rascal is a very alien name. <laughs> and he is coming from a planet called Morphica, which is a stupid name because he has also have a suit that can morph into anything he wants to shift in any form. Yeah, pretty stupid. And he uh, stole some discs. It's got some interdimensional inter transportation device known as the time disk. So he's here on the planet. I believe the natives wants to, uh, I don't know, these, these enslaved his, his people. He wants to have revenge. And this looks cool. Actually, I really like this here. But, you know, the designs are very over the top, very bulky, very, oh, we have these, these big shoulder pads and I have all these weapons on my, on my back and on my here. And it looks completely ridiculous because you have so much weight on you. I know it's it's a comic, but, you know, if you wanted to drench it in realism, um, it, it just, I mean, look at Cable, right? From from X-Men. Same, same thing. Anyway, so, um, and he has also the, the face mask of, of Deadpool. You know, it's just a color scheme. And then he has some, some morphic powers, uh, which is all cool and dandy. So he, um, I don't know, he, he meets up with one of these guys and wants to stop him and he pulls his katana and he's, you know, doing this Deadpool Spider-Man thing and then kills him. I mean, look at his arm. His arm is so fucking big. Doesn't look good at all. The anatomy is all over the place, but doesn't matter. So he teleports, goes into Earth. There's a corporation guy called Yoshi Emoto. And uh, he grants them asylum in change for the technology that he possesses, the morphing technology. So, okay, cool. Then we go into uh, Modo Island. It is some kind of facility, and this is mainly used for making or manufacturing toys. But then uh, it seems that um, she's been this this girl called April Emoto, who is the daughter of Yoshi Emoto, is given an assignment, and. Um, there's something wrong with the manufacturing process. The toy dolls are uh, fully interactive artificial life. And they uh, basically, 
you know, going Ultron, you know, they are turning against their makers and she's going to escape with the, I believe one of these, I want to say doctor, but uh, it's probably a scientist or something. So she is coming, uh, escaping, and then uh, she is attacking all these droids. And, um, you know, basically that's it. She's picked up by, uh, I don't know, whoever. And then the, they say, hey, you need to go to uh, Dagger City immediately. So she is going there. And then we switch to Mr. Uh, uh, Emoto himself, who is in some kind of a science fair or science exhibition. And he uh, basically uses that technology from uh, Rascal to uh, show people the world what it can do. And then some kind of a cloak. And the cloak uh, can shape into any form, uh, as you wish, as you can see here, uh, to, well, whatever. And he represents it to the to the world, and he said, "Hey, listen, you can do whatever. Why buy new clothes if you you can do this? And then uh, I can sell it to you, yada yada yada." And then out of nowhere, some cyber ninjas coming, and they are from the Dojo Yama clan. Basically, uh, I believe the the I don't say the enemy, but more like a rival company or something that wants to have that cloak. And this image is very very busy here. Uh, I'm not sure why a uh, Japanese clan uh, wants to have a, you know, cloak that can change into anything. Uh, maybe it's cool, but does it have military purposes? I don't know. Maybe maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, I noticed that all these poses are always look the same with the knees up, etc. Yeah, very 90s. So then um, um, the daughter comes and uh, she saves everybody. Well, she saves people here in the fair. She kicks ass, but she's being overwhelmed. And then her dad is dead. And then the face looks very, very wonky. Her pose also. She's crying that her father is dead. And then a, a panel later, she's lying there in her undies, looking for a job as a sniper uh, for Black Flag, Black Flag Independent Special Operations Group. Um, so if this part here... Um, if the writer wants to have me some kind of emotional connection with her and what happened to her father, uh, it completely fails uh, because, well, why warn for your father if you can a week later, you know, apply for a job? I mean, at least show me, I don't know, the funeral or the repercussions. Uh, maybe she's depressed. No, no, she's just here crying and, okay, I'm lying in my bed in my undies and have a, a toy here, ha, 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 and I'm applying for a job. And that's her story arc uh, for now. It feels very, very, very rushed. So then we see, uh, go to a very, uh, very 90s looking uh, pose uh, with a guy called Shrine. <laughs> and he has a, a dragon tattoo on his chest, which is green. I mean, who do you remind this of, you know, with Marvel character with green and yellow tights? Reminds you of as a black dragon tattoo. Spoiler, it's Iron Fist. Uh, anyway, so um, uh, he's a guy. He's a mystic warrior. He is uh, doing stuff while he is standing on some kind of a concrete thing with a guy that doing push-ups while he is doing reps. And then we see also this here, which is extremely like this here which is basically a copy of this here. Very lazy, uh, not impressive at all, uh, talking about something about something, which is not impressive at all. And then we go to the, the leader of the Black Frag group called, I don't know. Um, his name is Elijah Berenger. And uh, he's yelling and screaming and he's probably dying here. Going a little bit of a flashback. I love mech suits. And then we have, like I said, the very 90s again. Action poses, screaming, yelling, killing, enemies. Yay. America stuff. It's This this, this is almost America as you can, can get if you have mechanical mech suits in your, in your armory in America and in the near future. Anyway, uh, this is some kind of a, I don't know where it's gone. He's killing enemies and there is some kind of a traitor in his midst. And uh, he sees that his dead friends, his dead comrades has, you know, drugs smuggled with them. And he uh, 
wants to uh, expose that trader and he finds that trader and he, then he goes into war against the trader. We have some gruesome stuff going on. Um, and then he, uh, I don't know, they battle each other for, yeah, America, and I hate you and I kill you and this is not how we do things. And it's very, hurrah, as you can get. Nothing wrong with that. It just, I, I don't, I don't feel anything with it. This is just super testosterone, balls driven action thing without any meaningful storytelling, in my opinion. And then he wakes up uh, and he doesn't look like, uh, well, maybe he does look like it. I don't know. I mean, the art is so wonky that I cannot see what's going on, who, who these people are. I think this is a new character, but it seems that, that it's this character. But I could be sure because of all the, the screaming and yelling and the muscle tones. And, and the, I mean, look at this. I mean, let, let, me, let me show you. So this guy is dead, but his, his face is, his chin is probably on his chest. But when I do that, when I put my chin on my chest, my chest is not so big that it covers half my face. I mean, what's going on? This is what I really like. This is this is this is looks freaking cool. So if you're given a plus, this is cool. I like that. Now, um, I also like these these medic uh, women that tries to to help these people. Um, yeah, very nice. Uh, and then uh, he's getting healed up by uh, Shrine, and then becomes his mentor, training. Exact same pose, same same body type. And then we have this very boring looking, oh, I'm brooding, with the same background as Shrine here. So another copy and paste stuff. Uh, and that's the end of the book. That's it. That's all what you get, guys. This is, you know, they, they, I know they try to introduce characters uh, here and there, and that's all okay, but the story is, is, is nonsensical. It's just, hey, Here's this guy who is in a dangerous uh, situation. Um, and then we have this woman who is in a dangerous situation. And then we have this guy who is in a dangerous situation, but this is some kind of a revenge. Oh, we're going to kill him. We're going to steal the technology. And then, oh, man. Then we have this this very, um, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, mystical man of Zen and, and leadership and calm and, and blah, blah, blah. And then we have... America, yeah, fuck yeah, uh, kind of type uh, that is in a dangerous situation. And that's the story. <laughs> and then we have Dan Frog himself. I believe this is his girlfriend. Still, not entirely sure. Um, I met uh, met Dan Frog, well, not in real life. I talked to him on Twitter a couple of times. He's a very nice guy, and he's doing a um, another Black Flag book. Uh, now on Indiegogo, still in uh, in demand. Looks very, very, very cool. It's totally different than what we see here. Uh, so I hope it's good, but I don't know it's because it's been in development very, 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 very long time. Now it's very late. Uh, and Oh, by the way, this gorilla, we don't see it at all in this comic because there's so many characters. Uh, some, of the, some, some kid in here as well. As, I don't know who was all in there, but, you know, look at this. It's too much. So, is this good? Not really. It's basically very boring. I mean, if you... Um, this is only... Uh, 28, 29, 20... I don't know, maybe somewhere around that 30 pages or something. Not entirely sure. Um, you could have uh, done a little bit of... You know, maybe the main character goes into some kind of revenge spree against whoever... And then this creature is some kind of being holed up in a cave, which is also a little bit, you know, a, a, a trope. Um, and then she, he meets up with her, and then he meets then, I don't know, teleporting uh, Spider-Man, Deadpool guy, I don't know. You can do so much with that, or, or totally something different. I'm just coming up on the fly, what, what I think could work. This, what's in here, uh, this whole introduction, it doesn't pull me in. Okay, we have inter introduced to some characters. Does it resolve into issue one? Maybe, I don't know, but uh, cover looks okay, but that's it. Guys, thank you for much, so much for watching. Hope you liked the video. See you next time.